Call for action. It's from Syed Abdul Shakur Qadri. My recording so let me start the presentation. Or uh, as you can all see, I hope you can see. Hmm? Blue book. Ah, please, everybody should have a book with you, which is this book here. It should be, I hope you have the book in front of you, which is, uh, uh, and I'm going to go through this uh, book in a little bit of detail. But before I go through the book, I would like to firstly, um, just a sec. You know, this, this whole thing is so a bit, a little bit of confusion, uh, but I cannot see my, my sharing, right? So let me share my screen again with you. Okay, so I am sharing the screen. My okay, so uh, we had a, I think, a very interesting discussion last time. Uh, firstly, Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to everybody. And uh, our presentation is uh, going to be about the genealogy of. Aiz and Labin Saab's Handan. And I'd like to uh, continue on from where we discussed last time. But the presentation, in many ways, it's going to be a repetition of some of the things that we discussed last time. And I'd like to present this from a slightly different perspective. Uh, by the way, I'd like everybody to mute yourselves. Would you please mute yourself so that we don't get any sounds coming from your side until I finish my presentation? And then you can unmute yourselves and then uh, speak uh, and ask the questions. So I'm going to ask you all to mute yourselves, please. Uh, please make sure that you mute it. Uh, okay. All right. So going back to where I was, what I was saying, would you please mute yourselves? Thank you. So the genealogy of Kais and Labin Saab's Khandan. Uh, we discussed last time and I gave you an introduction of what the, the, the general contents of the book are and how the book is organized. And I started with Adam alayhi salam coming downwards. Today I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with Qadiz and Lamisa because I felt that many of the people that were uh, listening to me last time were not able to trace back and connect to where we are. So it's probably best to start with ourselves. And when we start with ourselves and then we look outwards, then it's probably easier because we know ourselves first. Therefore, I think somebody still is uh, not muted and I'm going to request you to please mute yourselves. Please mute Kalizi Apnaapko. Jogi mute Nikiye, mute Kalizi. Baba, uh, I participants I think you can control muting everyone on your end in case people can't figure it out. Uh, okay, let me do that. All right, I am going to do that then. Participants, uh, on the participants, I can mute everybody. Okay, I'm going to mute all. Yes, okay. You muted yourself. Okay, now I think you can hear me, right? All right, yes. good. Uh, so here we are. Uh, and as I was saying that we are going to now talk about this book. And before we talk about the book, let me uh, say a couple of things first that I had said last time as well. Yeah, I'm still trying to learn my ropes here on how to do this thing. And I think I lost my presentation somewhere. Where is my screen? <laughs> okay. Screen the eyes over there. 
स्क्रीन तो है आपका लेकिन वो स्क्रीन पहले टर्न हो रहा था अब टर्न ही नहीं हो रहा वो उसके नेक्स्ट आपका वीडियो भी आ रहा स्क्रीन भी है ऊपर जी एक सेकेंड मेरा वो तो है ओके आई थिंक आई फाउंड इट right that you may know each other not that you may despise each other verily the most honored of you in the sight of allah is he who is the most righteous of you and allah has full knowledge and is and is well acquainted with all things now the reminder for all of us is that we cannot forget that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first created adam alayhi salam and then hawa alayhi salam his wife and from him he produced the progeny in his children who then spread out who became tribes and nations and we are all spread out so all of mankind we are all related to each other so when we talk about genealogy we cannot forget that all of us are indeed brothers and sisters and cousins and uncles and aunts and uh, grandparents and grandchildren and everything we are all interrelated and sometimes it becomes quite interesting to know how are we inter- interrelated and how we should care for each other because allah subhanahu wa taala says that when you are righteous and being righteous means that is you follow his teachings follow his commandments and you love everything that he has created and you care for others you work for others so therefore when we are talking about this it is the very first thing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran and also through the teaching of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we should know our family we should know those who are closest to us because those are the ones that we can relate to first and that's where we start and if we don't know who our relatives are we don't know who our uncles and aunts and cousins and others are how can we really relate to them so it is so important to promote love and eliminate hatred unfortunately we see in our world there is so much hatred so much of how people come and uh, create divisions between themselves that is what we need to uh, bring to an end uh there are other verses in the quran which are also i've quoted them and a hadith which i've quoted them in the book as well right in the very beginning and i'd like you to read those those words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the words of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he talks also about that indeed that when you have ties of kinship that is ties of relationship when you understand and care for your relations then allah expands our risk our provision and he also increases wealth and he prolongs our life so these are extremely important aspects that we should right we need you to all again okay so uh, as i was saying we need to definitely promote that promote our ties which uh, increases wealth it increases and prolongs our life and when uh, uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if you cut off your ties with your relations then allah cuts himself himself off from you so can you imagine how important these ties of relationship are between us if we have misunderstandings we should try to remove them because all of us have their own perspective we all are right nobody is really wrong so let me go back to my presentation again and here we are uh, so today those were the, those were some introductory remarks and i want to say a few more things and then i will talk about 
uh, Aizen Lab bin Saab and his descendants and about the extended Khandan and some concluding remarks. I'm not going to go much into going backwards or starting from Adam alayhi salam and all the prophets, etc., like we did last time. But if need be, I can definitely go through that once again. So what we are going to do today, and I hope you all have your books in front of you, and I'd like you to please turn your books and start at the very beginning. Okay, but before I that, let me just show you a couple of photographs, and I thought that this would be good as a perspective that Kaizen Labdi Saab, who is our point of connection between all of us uh, here in this group at least, um, he was born in the year 1889 and he died in the year 1962. And you see two of his photographs here on the screen. The one on the left was taken around the year 1936. And he was uh, a civil servant, meaning that he was a government bureaucrat. Uh, he rose up to becoming the secretary of, uh, 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 what's it called? It's, uh, uh, I'm forgetting the, the department now. Uh, it's like commerce. And uh, uh, the photograph on his right is what he looked like in the latter part of his life uh, after he moved to Pakistan. Uh, one of the things that is worth mentioning here is that he was descended from Hazrat Abu Bakr as Siddiq through Hazrat Bahauddin Zakaria Multani. Bahauddin Zakaria Multani was a very famous Sufi who lived in the 11th century and he is buried in Multan in Pakistan. Uh, he has played a very prominent role and his descendants spread out all over India and the subcontinent to spread Islam. So uh, we are descended, that is, Aizan uh, Labdin Saab was descended from, uh, from Hazrat Bahadir Zakaria Multani and actually going back to Hazrat Abu Sabir. But also, if you look at our Khandan, like I discussed last time, that uh, we are interrelated and intermarried uh, into the families of uh, Umar Farooq, his descendants, as well as the Sayyids, the Sayyids being the descendants from uh, Rasulullah through Hazrat Bibi Fatima and Hazrat Ali. So uh, we will find various links going backwards and we are all intertwined. Now, Khaizan al Nisar married twice. His first wife was Saidni Begum Saiba who was also known as Pasha Begum. She died very early. She was uh, uh, early in her 20s, barely in her 20s when she died uh, in 1927. And uh, she died right about a couple of weeks after she gave birth to her last child. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, a few years later, Kaizan Labdin Saab then married uh, Zehra Begum Saiba, uh, who was also known as Putli Begum. She died in the year 1972 in, uh, in Mirpukhas in Pakistan. And we have their photographs here uh, you, that you can see. Uh, the children of Kaizan Labdin Saab, or particularly the younger children, I just wanted to mention to you, Kaizan Labdin Saab had 10 children. From his first wife, Saibni Begum Saiba, he had the eldest was Razia Begum Saiba, then Ali Abdul Rashid Saab, then Ali Begum Saiba then Qazi Abdul Khayyum Sahib, then Humaira Begum Sahib, and then lastly, Abidah Begum Sahib. And I've given the names of their spouses. Uh, Razia Begum Sahib was married to Nasiruddin Ahmed Sahib. Qazi Abdul Rashid Sahib was married to Munirun Sahib Begum Sahib, my mother. Um, Aliya Begum Sahib was married to Sayyid Khalim Ullah Khadri Sahib. Qazi Abdul Khayyum Sahib was ma married to Tawkhirun Nisam Begum Sahib. Umar Abegum Saiba was married to Abdul Karim Siddiqui Saab, Muhammad Abdul Karim Siddiqui Saab, and Abed Abegum Saiba was married to Mirul Swanli Saab. Uh, from the second wife, Zahra Abegum Saiba, he had four children. Zakia Abegum Saiba, Qazi Sayyiduddin Masood Shaheed, Qazi Baduddin Sayyid Saab, and Qazi Madaluddin Tariq Saab. Uh, among all of them now, only Tariq Ticha is still with us. The, all of the others are gone now. Zakia Begum Sahib was married to Abdul Majid Taruki Sahib. Kai said uh, Masood Sahib was married to Tawfiq Begum Sahib. Uh, Badrud bin Sayyid Sahib was married to Tasi Begum Sahib. And Mazarud bin Sahib was married to, uh, or is married still to Atiyah Begum Sahib. 
So I thought that I would very quickly mention uh, these people here. And uh, from here onwards, now we are going to work through the book. Oh. बिगिनिंग ऑफ द बुक and you will see at the beginning of the book uh that there is a table of contents and i'm going to present the table of contents here to you okay i have to keep sharing the screen this is strange okay so here i am All right, as you can see that in the very beginning the way to read this book is and i'm going to show this page by page right in the very beginning is a table of contents that's starting on page number 5 so if you please turn to page number 5 you will see the table of contents and please mark this table mark this page because this is where you should really start when you want to read this book now in this table of contents you will see that uh, there is firstly uh, this link on how to understand the family charts and i will go through this page in a minute and after that th there are some pages i have given where i have described various aspects about the hyderabadi family web how the arabs persians and turks they came to the subcontinent then uh, how the sayyid siddiqis and, and farooqis married amongst each other and how this whole web was created and then there are certain complex issues about the sufi links or missing female names about multiple marriages reliability and accuracy how how accurate is this data that that i'm presenting there are some historical errors and mistaken mistaken identity identity problems there's the issue about dna testing about corrections needed and omissions and inheritance issues so it would be very interesting for you if you would spare a few minutes of your time to read through this introduction now after the introduction i have given some very few brief biographies of some prominent people and i'll show these to you in a minute and after that the rest of the book is divided into five parts the first part is what i call the 10000 series which are our early ancestors starting from ibrahim alayhi salam all the way down to the times of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sahaba all of this is in this 10000 series section the second section is what i call the 20000 series and these are the descendants of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they come down starting from sheikh abdul qadir jilani all the way down to our times and these are all people who say that they are sayyid they are supposed to be in this section now then within this you will see that i have listed some prominent names some prominent families and uh, these names you could if you recognize any one of these that you may belong to one of these uh, families you can then go to that particular page and find details of that family likewise the 30000 series are the descendants of hazrat abu bakr siddiq and again subdivided into various prominent families and i've listed some of these names of the families here with page numbers then you've got the 40000 series and these are descendants of hazrat umar farooq and you can again likewise find the names of some of the prominent families lastly we've got the 50000 series and these are people who are not arabs primarily they are descended from the turks persians hadramis well hadramis are arabs and there are certain others as well and you'll find all of these various important khandans 
And some of them actually might be from the Sayyid Farooqis or Siddiqis, but I did not know. So I also put them into this 50,000 section. Now, this is how the book is generally organized. Now, let's go on to the next page. And I want you to go to page number nine. So please turn to page number nine in your books and you'll find it says how to understand the family tree charts. Uh, now, some of the parts I've already dis discussed with you as to how the groups are numbered. That is all chart numbers starting with one, two, three, four, and five, how they are organized. I've listed them over here at the, at the top. And then the important part is, and I will show this to you in the charts, that all charts are numbered. Every chart has got a number and there are cross references. And these cross references, you, uh, we will see uh, when we get to that, I will explain within the charts that in every chart, you will find against a, a name or below a name, there are certain numbers. And those numbers relate to the chart where you will find the family of that person, or you can find the ancestors and descendants. And I'll explain this when we get to the charts. Lastly, what I want to talk about is how the lines are organized. So if there are children and direct descendants, you'll find that the line that is used is a solid line. If there are multiple wives and more like more than one wife, two, three, four, then you'll find this kind of a dotted line that is one dash and two dots. And then if the same person is appearing at different places in the same chart, like for example, the wife is from one brother and the husband is from another brother, and you can see both of, of the names under, under both of these brothers. Therefore. I put in this dotted line to show that they are the same person. All sorts, also in some cases where there are certain missing links, I've used this dotted line. Now there is a problem sometimes that you will find that um, because this book is written in English, it's not written in Arabic or Urdu. Therefore, people spell the names differently. Like for example, Tarak Chicha writes his name as C-A-Z-I Kazi, whereas I write it as K-A-Z-I and Bashi Chicha wrote it as QAZI. So uh, they're all the same name effectively, uh, but they are spelled differently. Now, when I've written the names here, uh, you might say that, you know, Zulkadar Mahmoud, Zulkadar Chacha, or Zulkadar has uh, misspelled my name, but actually it's not a misspelling. It's just that you can spell a name in different ways and they're all correct. Is that you spell your name in a certain way and I'll be happy to correct it. For my next edition that I will be bringing out, I hope maybe next year. So if you see that your name or names of certain people like to you like them to be spelled differently, please let me know. For example, I've given the name Muhammad. Some people spell it as M U H A M M A D. Others M O H A M M E D. Another some uh, somebody else is M O H A M M A D or M U H H A M M E D or M O H O M M O M M A D etc. They've got all kinds of spellings there. Uh, so this is some, uh, all right, yes. Okay, you'll find that uh, I've also given dates of birth and death of people who have, who have died. So that it gives you a perspective of when did these people live. Now, I don't know the dates of many people, but where I knew, I have jotted those dates down. That will give you an idea of when these people lived. Uh, for those who, people who are alive, I've generally not given their dates because uh, nowadays there are these problems of identity protection, etc. So that's why I've not given the dates there. Now, if you see an equal to sign like this one here between two names, it means that those two people were married. I mean, they could have been divorced now or maybe the one, per, one person has died, but that doesn't make any difference. I still show that as an equal to sign that they were married at one point in time and they had children. Uh, so those are some important things. Okay, all right. The, in I guess some names, sometimes I've written uh, words in italics, like this khatib or uh, motasib, etc. That gives uh, their designation, or it could tell you the location where they were kazi of, like udbir is written in italics, etc. So the word no issue. Some people did not understand the meaning of the word no issue. No issue means that there are no biological children of that particular person. They did not have any children. Okay, so with that, let's, let us go on.
And uh, this is what the introduction, introductory pages look like. And you should, like I said, please get, uh, take some time out to read this. I am not going to read these pages. And I hope you will learn a few things from this. Now, the notable ancestors, as I talked about, start they start from page number 21. And I've started with some illustrious ancestors going back to the Prophet and the Sahaba. And then I come down to our time. Uh, virtually, uh, you can see them, some of the close relatives and uh, illustrious ancestors of later times. Somebody is in uh, I think we have to keep on doing this practice for meeting everybody. Just a minute, we'll mute all. Okay, so uh, that's muted again. So these are like, for example, I've, I've given Sheikh Bahadur Zakri Multani, where did he live and which chart numbers you'll find him in, and just four lines about him as to what was so great about him. So you'll find it would be very interesting for you to find out about the illustrious people who lived in the past. I know that there should have been many more names, but then the book would have been become a book of biographies. And maybe if Allah gives me life, inshallah, someday I will do that as well and write a short book of biographies. And if you'd like to contribute to that effort, I would invite you to join with me to write that book. So here are some of these names. Like I said, there are quite a few still. All right, so now we come down to our, our times. To so come down to our times, I'm going to start, like I said, with Qazi and Labi Saab. To go with Qazi and Labi Saab, I'd like you to go all the way down to page number, oh, my chart. Okay, so it is page number, in your books, you'll find page number 231. That is a chart of Qazi and Labi Saab, and it is numbered as chart number 30011. Now, I would like you to bear in mind, like I said earlier, that there are many families here, and every family is a great family. In my opinion, there's nobody that is lesser or greater. Every family is a great family, but in today's session, we're going to start with Qazi and Labi Saab because he is our point of reference, and from there we will expand and then you can see how you are related to everybody else. So I thought that this would be an easier way for particularly the children to understand. So Qazi and Labdi Saab was my grandfather, my dada. And each one of you obviously can relate uh, to him and say, how was he related to you? And Qazi and Labdi Saab here, as you can see, was born in the year 1892 and he died in the year 1962. He was around 70 years old when he died. And he had two wives. You can see that this, see this dotted, this, this line here showing that he had two wives. This dash and the two dots. So wherever you see this dash and two dots, it means these are lines of marriage. They're not lines of descent. So difference, lines of marriage and lines of descent. The second point I want to show you on this page is, you see on the right-hand side, in this, there's this box, which is C chart number 30005 for ascendance. Meaning, if you want to know who was his father and his grandfather, please scroll back to chart number, the previous chart number, just, and I'll go back and I'll show you, this is chart number 30005. So there you can see the Kaiz and Labisa having two wives, his father was Qazi Badruddin Hussain, whose father was Qazi Abdulluddin uh, Alauddin, whose father was Qazi Badruddin Khan, whose father was Qazi Alauddin of Udgir, whose father was Qazi Asaduddin Shamsuddin. And you want to see further backwards, you go to chart number 30001. So I could scroll back and I see in chart number 30001 that it goes back all the way to Qazi Muhammad Hussain. Then you want to go further back, you go to the next chart up. So you can keep on going upwards and many of these names may not make sense to you, so I'm not going to discuss those names today. Today, But please make sure that, let's see, again, somebody keeps uh, unmuting themselves. Please do not unmute yourself. Let me move. Okay. So, uh, as I was saying, let me go back to where I was. 
Um, so there you are that uh, we are going to start with Qazis and Lavis. Now the second part, as I was explaining in reading the chart, so you got your ascendance box on the right hand side. You got this line which shows the multiple marriages. That is, he's got two wives. This, this line is not the line of descent. But here you see a solid line below. The solid lines below means that these are children. These are children. So, so Kaizen Labdinsav's first wife, he's got six children. His second wife, he's got four children. And you can see through this solid line. Then as you come down below, you will see that I could not fit. Obviously, I could not fit his all Khandan in one, one chart on one page. So like, for example, his first child, Razia Begum Saiba, who was born in 1920 and died in 1987. She was married to Nasiruddin Ahmed Saab. And you see a number below Nasiruddin Ahmed. This number 30920 means that, that that is the number of the chart where you will find the family of Nasiruddin Ahmed Saab. So that's how we start expanding towards the left and right, and you know where everybody else is connected. And right below them, you will see chart number 30930. Now, 30930 is a chart where you will find the children of Razia Begum Saiba and Nasruddin Ahmed Saab. So in each one of them, you can see that I've given the, the connecting chart number, that is chart number of the family of the spouse, and below that is the chart number of their children. So this is how a page is organized and it becomes easy for you. And where possible, uh, wherever I've known, I've written the dates of the, of the people as to when they were born and when they died. That is, this is only for people who have died. Uh, so uh, like in this case, I had space, so I did put in the names of my siblings, my brothers and sisters, but then our children, we could not do it. So I go on to the next chart. And there from here, as you can see, Shima Faruqi and Abidin Faruqi, they come down here and you can see that this is their family. It gives the names of their children and their, their children's spouses and their grandchildren. And likewise here, you can see that it says Muhammad Habibuddin Faruqi, you want to find his family, you go to chart number 40212. Shima Faruqi is listed initially in 30011, but their children are listed here. So then you have Qazi Bukharuddin, married to Tayyib Anazni. And her family is on this chart number, and you can see each chart number that is given here. Now this becomes relatively easy for each one of us. So there you have Habib Din Farukhisab, Qazi Bukharuddin, Qazi Tafsuddin Adil, his family given on this chart, 30030. Then my family, and we have our uh, uh, children and our grandchildren, and our uh, uh, their, their spouses, the children's spouses. And they, then you've got Ahmedullah Siddiqui married to Zunera Siddiqui. Now, you, what this tells us is that it, by having all of these interlinks, that we are all really interrelated and it's important for us to know our relatives. So uh, I've given all of them, except of course, my youngest brother, Uzair, who did not have any children and uh, he died very early. So we don't have a separate chart for him. Then uh, now you will see that under this, it jumps directly to Abed Begum Zaiba, though in, in my second book, I'm going to, I've moved now this chart also to the chart of Mir Usman Ali Khalsa. These are all daughters. Uh, and because they are daughters, so they have to move. And I've moved them to primarily where the, uh, the fathers are. So that is why you will not find the charts of uh, the various uh, daughters in this section. You will find them in the section where the husbands are. But since I've given the chart numbers, like for example, Razia Begum is married to Nasir Dinamat who is in chart number 30920, and they are not directly interlinked or directly adjacent to the charts of Qazis and Labdi Saab. But after them, you will find, uh, after that, you'll find Qazi Badud bin Sayyid. Qazi Sayyid bin Masud Saab, unfortunately, he did not have any children, so we don't have a chart for him. But Qazi Badud bin Sayyid Saab, he, uh, now, in this book, of course, it's 
date of death is not given because he was alive when this book was published. Um, uh, but his children and grandchildren are given, and likewise, Qazi Mazraddin Tariq. So this, uh, I wanted to first uh, give you a quick view of the section where you will find the immediate family and descendants of Qazi Zainalabdin uh, Sahib. So just to give you a feel, let's go back again to the chart of Razia Begum, for example. And I said to you that you will find her family in chart number 30930. And let's scroll down to that chart here. So you'll find that chart several pages down. I'll give you the page number also. And here we are, 309. Okay, this is 30920. 30920 is on page number 279. So please turn to page number 279 in your books. Now, this is a chart of Rafat Yar Jung. Now, everybody, many of you may have heard of Rafat Yar Jung, but he was not. Rafat Yarjan the first, he was Rafat Yarjan the second. His father was Rafat Yarjan the first, and you will find his chart in 30900, like it says in the box on the right. His real name was Ziaul Haq Fasyuddin Ahmad, which most people don't know, but that's there for you to know as well. So Rafat Yarjan married to Asma Begum, their dates are given, and you'll find that his second son, but among the children, the fifth, was Nasir Din Ahmad Saab, who's, who was also known as Abul Ansar, and uh, his wife, Razia Begum. And you will see that their children are in 30930. So I'll go back to, to 30930. But if you wanted to know who are his brothers and sisters, these are his brothers and sisters, and these are their children. So one person who you will probably recognize is uh, Musavir Ansari. Asmi, Asma's Siddiqa, Asmi's husband. And you can see that he was a grandson of Nasir bin Ahmad Saab's elder sister, Azmat bin Sambeg. And another, another person that is known from this Khandan, who you all will recognize, was Tanya uh, uh, Begum, the elder sister of Nasir bin Ahmad Saab, Tanya Begum, who was married to Dr. Sayyid Muhyiddin Qadri Zor. And amongst his children were, were of course, uh, Tawfiqun Sambegam, who's Chachijan, and Tawfiqun Sambegam Chachi, married to Masood Chicha. And of course, everybody also knows Raji Bhai in Karachi, who was the youngest child of Tanitun Sambegam and Mohidin Tanizor. So now you can start relating people and say that, all right, this is where or how we are all related. We're getting closer now in understanding. But let's look at Nasruddin Ahmed Saab. Nasruddin Ahmed Saab. Now, by the way, you can you notice that the, the children of Tani, Tani Tanisam Begum are not in section three. They are in section two because he is Sayyid. And the Sayyids and his chart, you will find under this Sayyid. Therefore, they are in star chart number 20915. You will not find them in this section. Now, this Nasruddin Ahmed Saab's uh, children, there you'll find them. There, uh, 30930, there it is. Nasir Din Ahmed children, uh, Rashida Sultana Saiba, Rafia Sultana Saiba, Lekhaw Zera, Bey Sultana, Nurbu Yudin Ahmed. Why does, why do people start unmuting themselves? Please don't unmute yourself. Let me mute you again. So people, Please don't unmute yourself. So there you are. So this is like I've given you another another section where you can find the children of Razia Begum and Nasruddin Ahmed Saab. So let's then go back, and I'm going back in my own book. And if I go back to my starting point, every time my starting point, at least in this case, is Qazi Zainalabdin Saab. Now Qazi Zainalabdin Saab, if you go back to chart number three zero zero one one. And that was on page number 
Okay, there it is. Please go back to page number 231. I want to show you something else there. Okay, there I am almost there. Okay, so Qaz and Labdin Sahib, by the way, so like just as, like I showed you the children of Radhiya Begum Sahiba, you can also find the children of Aliya Begum Sahiba in, again, in, in the Sayyid section, not in the Siddiqui section, in 21651. Unfortunately, there was a problem uh, in the printing, and I think the descendants of Kalimullah Qadri Sahib got knocked out somehow. Uh, so, I think I'm still getting again people muting and muting themselves. Please do not unmute yourself. Okay, so there we are back again. So Kaizen uh, the So you can find, like I said, Kalimullah uh, Qadri Sab in the Sayyid section. And you will find each one of them I've given you. You go, go to those sections and you'll find their children. So let's go one step up. That is because this is one step that I wanted to show that is so closely linked to all of us. And this is if you go to Kaiz and Lagdin Sahib in the previous chart, that is the page number 230. In page 230, you will see that Kaiz and Lagdin Sahib. Uh, his father was Qazi Baduddin Hussain, and his mother was Rehman Nisa Begum. And among his wives, Saibi Begum Saiba and uh, Fatima Zahra Putri Begum Saiba. Now, Saibi Begum Saiba's family belonged to, and many of you may have heard of, the Tekmal family. Now, Zahra Begum Saiba's mother was also from the Tekmal family. So in fact, both of them are from the Tekmal family, but uh, her ancestry, her paternal ancestry goes to the Faruqi family. So we'll go and look at that also in a, in a minute. But before we look at her paternal, let's look at Sahibni Begum Saiba's family, which is the Tekmal family. Now the Tekmal family, you'll find in chart number 20202. 20200. Now 20200, you will find in the book in chart in page number. Page number 67. So we scroll back to page number 67 now. I think I can do it easier this way. Yes, 67. Okay, there I am. Okay, page number 67. This is the chart of uh, uh, the take mal. Now, now the take mal is, the way it comes is, if I can scroll back a couple of charts further, uh, go to chart number, Yes, chart number 20012 on page number 61. Now, this particular gentleman, Sayyid Saib Husseini Saab, is the person where we start for the Tekmal family. Now, Saib, Sayyid Saib Husseini Saab was the great grandfather of, uh, of Saib Begum, that is the first wife of Qazi Zain Lagni Saab. Now, that's where the Tekmal uh, part starts. He had settled down in Tekmal. He lived in the year 1805 to 1880. So that was like around close to a little over 200, around 200 years back is when he lived. And uh, he also had two wives and you can see his descendants. Now among his descendants, we are right now going to discuss the descendants that are coming through uh, Sayyid Mahmud Pasha Khadri. Sayyid Mahmud Pasha Khadri that you can see that I'm showing on the screen right here. This person right here. He was married to Amatul Fatima Shahzadi Begum. And that goes us, takes us to chart number 20200, which is on page number 67. So go back to page number 67. Okay, 
Okay, I'm back to page number 67. There you can see that Mahmud Pacha Khadri Sahib was married to Amutul Fatima Shehzadi Begum Sahiba. You want to know her chart? That's on 30220. Now, you can see how much of work and interlinkages are shown and given here in this chart. So, uh, now, uh, the children of Mahmud Pacha Khadri, they are five children. And there was only one son and four daughters. Saibni Begum Saiba was the third child who was married to Kaizan Ladin Saab. And two people who are, I mean, who you can probably recognize very easily in here are Sayyid Ahmad Qadri Saab, the brother. And among his sons are Asif Chicha and Arif Chicha. Arif Chicha is here with us today. And now you can see that he is a nephew of Saibni Begum Saiba who was my daddy. So that's how Arif Chicha is related to us. For those of you who don't know how close he is, that's how close he is. The other person is Zahida Begum Saiba, the youngest sister of Sahibni Begum Saiba. And among her children were Mahmud Bhai, who was married to Rafiapa. And of course, uh, Hamid Chicha, who, who, still, who lives, still lives in London, you all know him. And there's, uh, uh, um, yes, the, like people like uh, Pir Pasha, etc., who are her, her eldest daughter's uh, children, all of their brothers. Uh, the uh, you've got Vilay Bhai, who's married to Salma, who's also son of, of uh, Zahida Begum Saiba, and uh, the youngest son, Ahmad, who's my brother-in-law, married to Zunera. So you, you find that many of her children are intermarried with the children of Aiz and Lab Yusuf. So this is where the links are, and you can see how we are all so closely interrelated and how we should know each other. Now, uh, this is one section I wanted to show you, which is the Tekmal section. Now, in the Tekmal section, there are many relatives you will recognize. And if you will just scroll back a little bit, you will find various people here who descended directly from, um, from uh, what's his name, uh, Sayyid Sahib Husseini Saab. So from Sayyid Sahib Husseini Saab, you can find among his children, go to each one of them, and as you will scroll down and you will find them, you will see that uh, you will recognize many names. And then you can trace backwards and, and see how they relate back to you. So that's the, 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 the best way that you will see. By the way, on this chart, I want to show you that look, uh, say, Mahmoud Pasha Khadri was married to his cousin, Amtul Fatma Shadali. That's why I've, I've shown this dotted line that shows the link. Uh, Okay, one other person that uh, you may want to know that is also important is that Sayyid Mahmud Pasha Khadri Sabs had a sister by the name of Fatima Zehra Bibi. You can see this, that is, this is the father of Saibi Begum. So Fatima Zehra Bibi was married to Sayyid Ahmed Vaiduddin Faruqi. Now Faruqi, we are now connecting to Faruqis. And uh, Amongst his children and grandchildren was Zehra Fatima Saiba, that is Kaizen Labdin Saab's second wife. And we will, I will show that to you when I get to this chart. So you can see that um, Fatima Zehra Saiba was, uh, uh, again, she also had the, had the name of her grandmother. Um, Fatima Zehra Saiba, the second wife of was a niece of his first wife. So again, all interrelated, as we say in Urdu, a lot of khichdi. Uh, too much khichdi, everybody is interrelated to each other. Let's now go on. And if there are people, uh, once I finish with this, and people would like me to go back and uh, identify where they are located, I'll very happily show you the charts where you are. So I'm going to go to now to the Faruqi section to chart number 40401. Now 40401 is in chart number, or page number. Let's go to 40401. Please turn to page number 429. 
Now, 429, these are the Qazis of Parbhani. And uh, very famous, Qazi Munyuruddin I. And Qazi Munyuruddin I, his son was Qazi Ahmad Vaiduddin Faruqi, who we just discussed was married to Fatima Zahra Bibi Saiba. And uh, Fatima Zahra Bibi Saiba was the sister of uh, Amatul Fatima uh, Shahzadi Begum Saiba, that is, mother of Saimi Begum. Now, Qazi Vaiduddin Faruqi Saab had two sons. Qazi Ahmad Muniruddin Faruqi, he was Muniruddin II. And Qazi Abdul Samad Faruqi Saab, who was married to Azam Bibi Sahiba. Now, you can see and further linkages here. Now, Qazi Ahmad Muniruddin Saab II, and I'm going to show you his chart, the next page. He also had two wives. And the second child from his first wife was Fatima Zahra Putri Begum Sahiba, who was married to Kaizen Labdin Saab, his second wife. So there you see the linkage that amongst, she's also, she's Faruqi, but her mother is from the Tekmal side. Uh, so there you are. And then uh, amongst the other children, uh, you will see uh, that uh, Fatima Zahra uh, Saiba, her younger brother was Kazi Ahmed Nasiruddin Faruqi. And Kazi Ahmed Nasiruddin Faruqi Saab had three children. The first was Ahmed Muniruddin Yusuf Pasha Saab, who's married to Siraj, Bashish Shah's daughter. Kasri Kutsiya Kasri Saiba, who's married to, that is, uh, Chachi Pasha, that is Kasri, Kazi Badruddin Sayyid. And the, young, the youngest brother is Umar Baba, which is Ahmed Muniruddin. So there you have the close linkage of these three. Sometimes you may not realize how closely they are related to us. And also, Qazi Muniruddin Saab, he, from his second wife, and his second wife happened to be the sister of Qazi Zain Labdin Saab. Qasim B was sister of Qazi Zain Labdin Saab. And you can see that in chart number 30005. If you go back, you will see that she is sister of Qazi Zain Labdin Saab. And from her, he had five children. And most famously, I think you will recognize at least two of them, which is Qazi Bash Kabiruddin Saab, who was in, in Karachi and he died, of course, in the late 80s. And uh, uh, he was well known to most of us. And then Bashir Chicha, Qazi Bashiruddin Saab. So both of them were stepbrothers of, of uh, my second daddy, which is uh, Zahra, uh, Zahra Begum Saiba. So Qazi Muniruddin Saab's family is very, very closely interlinked with the family of Qazi Zain Labdin Saab. Uh, the other person that I wanted to mention was Qazi Muniruddin Saab had a brother who was Qazi Ahmed Abdul Samad Faruqi. And among his children, you will find that uh, uh, there were one, two, three, four, five, six children. And the third child, which is Mumtaz Begum Saiba, among her children are Amanullah Bhai, who lives in Chicago, and Naim Bhai, who is married to Parveen Appa. So you will, if you go back to chart number 20601, you will find that among them, you will find Naim Bhai and uh, Amanullah Bhai and all the other brothers and sisters, they're all in there. Uh, but likewise, if you see the children of their other siblings, you will find many names that you will recognize. If you want, I can go through each one in detail, but uh, I will do that only when you request me and I'll go back to that chart and I'll find them for you. Now, this gives you a, an overall general summary of the very close, immediate relatives. I think I've not forgotten anybody, but of course there are certain others, like if you go to the uh, sisters of Kaizen Labdin Saab, Kaizen Labdin Saab did not have any brothers. He only had sisters. Amongst his, his own sisters, you will find, like I already mentioned to you, Bashi Chicha. And among his other sisters, you will find the other children who I think none of those people are in our chat uh, today. So I will not go through them now, but you can go there and look for them and find out who were the other children of his sisters. And you will recognize some more names there. So starting point, I'll reiterate once again, whenever you want to do it, go back to your own family and start from there. 
Now, the other, one other aspect before I close, I just wanted to mention is that wherever possible, I have also included the susral of as many of our uh, relatives of our, of our generation and even of our children's generation where I could get these best susral. Like, for example, you go to my own name, you will find that the entire family of my wife, Aisha, is also given. And you can see that in her name. Let's go back. I'll show you just, to, just so that you get an idea. And this repeats itself for all of you, not just for my wife, not, at least the ones I know of. So, for example, my wife, Aisha, her family, you'll find in the chart number 51010. So, uh, Others as well, you'll find them like uh, Mina Zabi, her family you'll find in 24010, and so on and so forth. You'll find also, so many of you, where I could get the charts, I've included those. Now, after this book was published, I've had ex extensive responses, and I've been able to add more than 200 pages of more, of more charts, and I discovered many others which are added in here. And so whenever that second, the second edition gets published, it will be much uh, more expanded. And if you think that your families or your susral or your damas or bahus families are not in there, you would like to include them in there, please feel free to send that information to me. Okay, I'm going to stop here. And uh, uh, if we want to continue a discussion, we can do this today and maybe we can do it in the next session. And uh, lastly, before I end, uh, one more thing I wanted to say was that we are planning to have another family group meeting, and that will be an organized meeting, not a disorganized meeting, uh, on the, around the Eve time. And I will give you the links for that. And we will do some presentations uh, there. It's not going to be just uh, people just coming and say, hello, Islam, let me know how to you, how 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 you, don't want to create total chaos. We'll try and organize and uh, for that, Parveen Apai has volunteered to put together a very nice program. Uh, inshallah, we will do that uh, around Eid time. I will let you know the date and time for that. So I will end over here and you can unmute yourselves. And if you'd like to ask me questions or share some comments, I'll uh, we'll be glad to hear from you. Thank you all very much. Jazakumullah khairan. Yes, anybody, would you like to ask questions? Asalaamu Alaikum, Akhtadir. That was a very nice thing to know. That was very great help for me. Thank you. Jazakallah al khair. By the way, whenever you are talking, please make sure to uh, to introduce yeah, yourself. Yeah, I'm Najma pa calling. Thank you, you so much. Pa. Thank you so much, Muktadar. Bahot hi, bahot hi informative tha. Bahot madad mili isse. Bahot achcha laga. Allah mein jazaa khair de aapko. Allah il hai madad kar hai. Mesha har achche kam mein aapki jazaa khair. Jazakallah. Allah. Allah fis. Anybody else would like to, to talk? Please feel free to speak. No, this 